When you were a kid, the idea of the Russian defence minister that would be a very strict, cold kind of person, actually meeting him and finding that he's a fan. How are you? Ivanov, Minister of Defence of the nice Russian to meet Federation. You. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. Good to meet you. Just... And he bought Love Me Do, and he openly admits it. It's a great uh, satisfaction of people learning English through our songs. It's something we never imagined. But we, we never thought, yeah, but it's now you can see. It's great. It's really good. And finally, we come here and see it in practice. It is amazing, you know. In the 60s, we did realize that one day our generation was going to be in power. Um, but now it's actually happened. <laughs> All right, man. So how does it feel cycling around here the day after? Feels great, although we just got stopped by the Russian police and the Polit Cycling Bureau. You can film here. You filmed me last night. I think we were doing a show here last night. You can't imagine exactly what it's going to be like to do back in the USSR in Red Square. It's a special sort of song for the Russians. Yeah, 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 yeah. come on. Ruski. As we got nearer and nearer to it, you start to realize, wow, it's really a special song. It was banned and it was all very sort of forbidden. And suddenly out of the West, there comes this guy writing this song about back in the USSR. You must have thought, oh, they're writing about us, you know. Good show, huh? Я был вчера. Beautiful. You've been yesterday. А я? Я маме по телефону давал слушать. I called my mom and give her oh, a you mobile did? phone. Oh. Okay, excellent. And I think some people wondered whether it was a bit of a Mickey take or whether it was a parody or why would I write something like that? For me, it was just fabulous just suddenly realizing all of that in the three minutes it took to sing the song. Just seeing them all right here, that whole stretching back there filled with people and then me singing back in the USSR and the place just went electric it's just like someone put electric current through it and then of course you know I suddenly start doing the lines about Ukraine girls and the Moscow girls and I think of course it's going to go down well here it's a great unifying thing you know music people don't have to understand the language Whoa! Hey, baby! Here! Hey! How are you doing? Okay? Good. Good. Who's driving this vehicle? <laughs> What's your name? Anya. Anya. Oh! Beautiful. Спасибо. Yeah. See you, man. Bye bye. It's really an amazing historical day just to be here, even as a tourist, you know, like now, just to be almost cycling around Red Square. I didn't realize you weren't allowed to ride a bike here. What about tomorrow night now? I mean, do you ever get nervous or do you do something superstitious before a big show? Or are you absolutely in control? Um, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite happened. It was just like, oh, I'm just so excited. And I, I think that will probably happen tomorrow. I want to play in Moscow. I want to play for the Russian people. I want to give them something. I know all those years, they want to hear the Beatles song, sung by one of the Beatles. Okay, and St. Petersburg, this is Private Air 197 uh, on the Paul McCartney flight. We are ready to rock Russia. Привет, Russia. Привет. The whole idea of coming to Russia was very special anyway, just because I'd never been to the country and the history and everything. I was excited at the idea. Has St. Petersburg lived up to your expectations? Oh, yeah, more than that. The kind of thing I like is this making bonds. That's what it's all about, really. Once they, they banned the Beatles, now they don't. To be here and just realise that this, these people have got the same hearts that, that we have. I should have known it all along, but to actually be here and experience it, it you, you learn it afresh. Hey, okay. Hey, okay. Hey, okay. Hey, okay. Hey, okay.
I'd been asked to do a masterclass in St. Petersburg to give something back to the Russians before I went and did the big show and sort of was the big dude. To just sort of go there and just be somebody who was working with their kids, you know? And that appealed to me, that idea, and I'd been asked to do that a couple of years before. went to St. Petersburg to the Glinka School and heard young gentlemen playing music. Excellent song. Who wrote that song? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so am I getting some private time with them? Yes. Good. impressed me. One particularly was a, a guy playing classic guitar. He played a really lovely piece, very nice, without the music, so I thought, you know, that's pretty impressive, lovely tone and sounded great. And afterwards I said, who wrote that? He said, I did. I was like, okay. That was good. Why did you stop him? And when did you write that? Last summer. Last summer. Very good. How old are you? Fifteen. He will be fifteen. Yeah. I wrote my first song when I was fourteen, but it was much simpler than that. So I wish you very good luck. <laughs> what you do. And this was your first big lesson. In Going to the Conservatory of St. Petersburg was really amazing for me for one main reason. I was actually going to now walk the steps in this day and age that Tchaikovsky walked then. It's really exciting to be in the same school that uh, such great people as Tchaikovsky came to. That's fantastic for me. And it was such a huge honor they gave me an honorary doctorate, you know, I mean, wow. We wish you to be our honorary doctor of music. Привет. Я рад быть здесь. Это для меня большая честь. My wife Heather and I are very proud to be in Russia to accept this great honor and we thank you very much. Spasiba. We got a private viewing. The uh, director of the Hermitage showed us through the whole place and gave us a little potted history as we went. It gave me a good perspective on a section of Russian history and why St. Petersburg was such a beautiful city. Little special things like that made the whole journey very special.
this was actually the original reason I'd gone to St. Petersburg, was to help with this uh, effort, the Meshikov, because these kids are orphaned kids and underprivileged kids, and that was why I really wanted to go there, to help set up this new charity um, for them. Knowing that now they were, they were orphan kids, and you obviously you look at each member of the choir and you go, oh, and you, you know there's a story there, there's a big story, and it, suddenly there they are. The singing my songs is very emotional, it's quite an emotional little song for me. I just got the feeling that these kids were there, giving it their best, that somehow music and this whole thing was going to maybe, hopefully, give them a better life, give them something to look forward to, something to aim at. I turned quickly to Heather and she was welling up. I go, no, I've got to talk, I'm not going to look. What really got me was looking at them all and thinking, they're in their Sunday best. This is it, this is the best outfit they've got on. We had this visit with Mr. Putin, you know, which was great, it's a real honor going into the Kremlin. It was kind of slightly strange, you know, being met by a, a general. It was very Russian, and then walking through these miles of corridors. But then eventually sitting down, having a little chat with him, which is really nice. Me to sit here. You got to realize deep down he's an ordinary guy like we all are, you know, but he's an important man. When you were growing up, did you listen to the Beatles? Yes, it was extremely popular. It was like a gulp of freedom. Your music was like an open window to the world. It was, uh, it was banned by the authorities, yeah? It was considered at this time a propaganda of some alien ideology. We talk about landmines, which is great. Be able to get our two penny worth in about that. Maybe you know that Heather and I campaign against landmines. Do you know this? Yes, I know. And I know that your wife is very actively involved in that. Do you think one day Russia will be able to join the ban treaty, or do you find it too restrictive? <coughs> I think that anything which is aimed at saving people's lives deserves our utmost attention and support. And he showed us around other bits of the Kremlin. He told us some of the history of the Tsars being crowned there. I like to do that, keep it nice and uh, casual, yeah. I asked about Rasputin and the lady said, oh, I suppose he must have been around here. He used to hang with them royals. Nice guy, seemed very genuine. Like most of the Russians we've met so far. So he's from a working class family, as we are. He's got those values. No wonder the people like him. Asked him if he was coming to the concert, I thought it was half a chance that he might be. But he said, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. So I played him, let it be. I thought, well, I'll give you a little private concert, you know. 
Okay, uh, yeah, thank right. you very much. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. About, uh, thank you very okay. much. Okay, good. Say thank hello you. to your wife and your children. So, it was just a little gesture. He was very nice, he sort of sat, he sort of applauded. Um, so I thought, well, that's, that's that, you know, okay, he's not coming, that doesn't matter, we're going to still do the concert. After so many years of looking at an audience, that if somebody starts to leave, if somebody starts to move, or a little group of people start to do something, I noticed it. I suddenly saw a rustle in the crowd, I saw a lot of people turn round, and I said, what's that, you know? So I could see a little phalanx of men walking in ahead of someone. So I said, that's got to be him. And I, the crowd was starting to applaud. I thought, who's a popular president? It's got to be President Putin. He's arrived. And at all the same time, I'm still singing, remembering my chords, remembering my words, trying to keep it all together. But, you know, my mind is boggling, going, wait a minute, the, the Russian president just walked in with, you know, half a dozen KGB men. Long live all of us crazy soldiers.